Hey, you're listening to the Burnt Out Entrepreneur Podcast, where you'll learn why you're feeling so burnt out, some insights and hacks to get you along this entrepreneurial journey. I'm Kylie Yota, former oil and gas manager, turned health coach, life coach, and business mentor for female entrepreneurs just like you and help them heal and recover from burnout. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Burnt Out Entrepreneur. My gosh. So many things have been happening in this world, and if you're like me, you're feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, you know, and constantly giving in to the demands of others. Look no further. Today, we are talking with Heather Roberts, who is a boundaries expert. You'll know this by the title of her podcast. It is called Boundaries, Check, Business, Check, and Boobs. I love it. I love it. It's it has everything wrapped up into one. You know exactly what you're going to get. We're going to be talking about boundaries with female entrepreneurship and boom. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> Heather helps high achieving women create efficient and profitable businesses while prioritizing our personal needs. And as women needs, so needed. And she's so big on this because boundaries are not a four letter word. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Boundaries are not a four letter word. It's not a bad thing to have a boundary. We're going to go all into that today. And it's, we're going to be taking it from the standpoint of it's rather the key to reclaiming our lives and how to unlock our true potential. So I'm ready to jump in and it, getting it back into boundaries, right? Yeah. With so much talk about boundaries these days and how important it is for us to have them, how we need to, you know, respect ourselves, take care of ourselves first as women, as mothers, as whatever our roles are, right? Everyone talks about boundaries, but I can, as the expert on boundaries, can you define exactly what a boundary is for those people who are like, well, I know I'm supposed to create them, but I don't even really know what, where to begin or what it really is. Well, I think too, I think the first thing is that boundaries really are unique to each person. And for example, on my podcast, I ask every guest to define what boundaries means to them. I've interviewed over 30 women so far and no two answers have been the same. So I like to share with people my own personal definition of boundaries and that kind of helps set the stage, I think, of what people, you know, then go, oh, okay. So for me, boundaries are like my backyard. I have a nice fence that goes around it and I get to use the fence to keep all the critters out, but I have a gate and in my gate, I can let in, you know, the things that are serving for me and working for me and all of that. And here's the thing about this gate. When it's not working anymore, they can just march their little selves out the door and the gate shuts behind them. So boundaries are an ever evolving, you know, uh, thing. (laughs) And, you know, some people define them as a way to keep me safe in body, mind, and spirit. Obviously, you know, we have physical boundaries and we have boundaries for our mind and, and yes, your spirit. But I think we really get lost in thinking about the rigidity, that a word, the rigidness, anyway, being rigid with boundaries. <laughs> um, and it's not, it, boundaries aren't rigid. You do have things that maybe are non-negotiable, you know, and that's like that line in the sand, but it's, it's really more about finding things that work for you and make life better. And, you know, when you don't do those things and it makes life worse. Wow. That's good. That nutshell there. <sighs> Cause what makes it good for me? And oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have a clearer understanding of what boundaries are, and I love that you said it's different for every person and being that it's different for every person, how do we then create better boundaries for ourselves? Well, I actually like to start a step backward from that. And one of the things that I have found is that one of the biggest reasons women do not, women entrepreneurs, women in general, this is not a, you know, do yeah. not create boundaries for themselves is because their own confidence and self-worth is low. Mm. And so what I say to somebody when they're like, 
I know intellectually I need to create boundaries, but I just don't do it. And that to me means, well, intellectually great, but you are not loving something about yourself. You don't think you're worthy. And so what I tell women to do, and it feels like it is really uncomfortable to do this at the beginning, but just other things the habit forms. So I want you to write down every day, one thing that you love about yourself. You're already practicing gratitude. That's wonderful. You can add that into your gratitude practice. But every day for seven days, commit to writing down one thing you love about yourself. Okay. It can be, look, maybe you're having a kind of one of those days and you're like, you know what? The only thing I can love about myself today is that I am rocking the hairstyle. Fine. Great. Fabulous. That's something, you know, maybe it's, Boy, I really love the way that I communicate to my team when we are having, you know, an initiative that we're rolling out. Fabulous. You know, whatever that is, it doesn't matter. It's the act of doing it and thinking about you as a person. Because once you start to think about you as the as a person who is worthy of love and self-love, you then begin to say, oh, yeah, I'm really not okay that, you know, um, my, you know, friend only calls and dumps on me, you know, like verbally vomits her emotions and then walks away. You can be like, mm, can't do that, you know, or yeah. I'm not okay that I, you know, have made a mistake and created a 100% open door policy, but I don't get anything done anymore. Right. right? So, and, and boundaries can have such a big meaning. It, you know, it can be very small and very narrow, but it can also be very big. So first begin to love yourself. And when you do that, you'll begin to feel, figure out when things, when you get that feeling of friction that something's not okay, that's a sign that you need a boundary around it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And it's kind of similar to how I've heard this before, where how do you decipher a counterfeit bill is you play with real bill, right? So once we figure out what real love is, then we can figure out what counterfeit love is. And when people aren't showing us true love, and especially for people, women who grew up with codependency, you know, our ideas of love are so, um, you know, backward or just not genuine because we don't, mm -hmm. we haven't experienced real, true, meaningful love and especially love to ourselves. Yeah. 100%. It all starts there. It's good. Oh my gosh. Is there any other ways that you, um, we can help besides the self love? What other mm -hmm. things we, these women can do to start creating better boundaries? Uh, so, okay. I want you, this is going to be a tactical, this is very tactical. So I want you to look at, ideally, I'd say do this for two weeks. Some people may go, I cannot do this, but do a time study. Okay. And mm -hmm. I want you to, in 15 minute increments, write down how you spend your time. What are you doing now? You're going to notice some things in there. Number one, you may be noticing that you are doing all of the small and mundane and little administrative things that you're like, I just want to get it done. I'll do it faster. Okay. No. That needs a delegation boundary, right? Mm. You need to delegate that. Um, another thing could be um, in a meeting, you know, maybe there is somebody who always, always interrupts and talks over, mm -hmm. you know, okay, there, boom. Okay. Then we need a communication boundary and we need one that's around the cadence of how meetings are going to be handled so that we eliminate that problem. Oh, I love that. My gosh, that's going to be so beneficial for so many women. Yeah. 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 Um, another one is, and this is especially true if you are working from home, it's the, you know, you feel like you can't ever get anything done because you got a kid popping in and out or a husband or a partner or a family member. And they're like, well, you work from home and you own your own business. So yeah, I'm just going to stop on over, you know? No, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I may not look conventional in the way that I'm earning money, but I earn money. And so those are other examples of, you know, if your mom calls you three times a day and it's making it so that you cannot 
perform your duties in your, in your business, then you need to say, Hey mom, please. I love you, but let's limit the calls to between this hour. You know, don't call me in these hours. I can't talk. Yeah. I've actually done that with my own parents. Like they'll call and I'll see the call coming in mm -hmm. and I'll just call them back later. I said, Hey dad, I was either with a client or yeah. I mean, they don't have to know that you weren't actually meeting with someone else, but you were, you are, you could be your own client. I'm mm -hmm. taking care of backend stuff, marketing stuff. I'm, I'm working on my business and, you know, they wouldn't consider calling you at your day job, your corporate job three times a day. I think there's another, and you, you kind of did it a little bit there though, which made me wanted to say, you don't owe anybody an explanation. Oh my God, so good. You don't. And that's yeah. part of, that's creating a boundary with yourself. You mm -hmm. do not owe them an explanation. Oh, that's good. And I feel like as women, we see it, we need to explain ourselves. I just did a post on toxic femininity. We could go hold down that rabbit hole, but yeah. just in general, there's so many social constructs that we have created as women and how we relate to each other, you know, how we speak to each other. The thing that I was kind of going off about was why do we have to add emojis at the end of our text messages sometimes, or just to make the other woman like we're not super direct in mm -hmm. the disc model. I'm a high D, but also a high I. So, and my adaptive is my I will lower and my D. Yeah. And both. Yeah. That's me taking charge, trying to <laughs> take care of business. So when yeah. I get into that high D mode, I have offended some of the female colleagues that I have. So, oh, yeah. Just, you know, don't worry about too much about the wood, you know, how it's written. Just, we get too caught up in the semantics of the written word because so much is lost in the nuance. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think the other, um, the other really key piece of advice is remembering no is a complete sentence. Mm. Mm -hmm. It goes back to, you don't have to explain. You don't have to justify. You know? um, so my first business that I started, I co-founded with my husband and we found that <laughs> it drove me bonkers. We had to put some boundaries around when we were able to talk about work because mm. I noticed that we were I'm like, my eyeballs would pop open and one of the two of us would immediately start talking about work. I'm like, this is six o'clock in the morning. This is not healthy. <laughs> you know, right. and so we literally have hours that you can talk about. You can ask me business questions or you can vent about it or something and hours that you can't. And some people are like, say, that sounds so stupid and rigid. You know what? The last thing you want to do is solve a client problem at 6 a.m. when you, you know, no, you just don't. Yeah. You want to put your best foot forward to your business. Right. And now yeah. the caveat to that is, because we have our cutoff at 7 p.m., no work talk after 7 p.m. The caveat to that is, if something has come up and we just haven't had a chance to discuss it, and it's after that time, we actually ask for permission. Hmm. So I would say, hey, my husband's name is Josh. So, hey, Josh, um, or hey, sweets, I, I need to ask you, you know, something about work. Um, is this a good time? Are you in the brain space to do that? That's so Either good. yes or no. And all he has to say is yes or no. And if the answer is no, I'm like, cool. Can we can we like put this on the calendar for first thing in the morning? I just want to knock it out and I need your advice. Oh, that's so Same good. thing with him. Usually he's the one, I'm the one who's like, no, I, I can't, I can't process that now, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking as you're talking, I mean, it could be even as simple as you're sitting in the same room, but they're not at capacity to talk now. Maybe just shoot him an email. Yeah. It, or, you know, I'm, or yeah. cause I'm thinking like how we would handle it. Like if we weren't working with our partner, say yeah. we have coworkers or, you know, we have a team or whoever it's like, huh, obviously this is out of hours, you know, but if I have a thought, you know, outside of normal working hours, I would just say, Hey, like, I just send an email. Cause that's what I would do for myself. You know, if I was at home when mm -hmm. I was working the corporate job and like, Oh, I have something that I need to address when I get to work in the morning, I would actually email it to myself. That's what I was going to say. Then, then I would, could just copy and paste it and send it to the, you know, the person yeah. that it's intended for when I get yes. there in the morning. Yes. And because one of the things that I am really 
this is a personal thing. I preach it to the crowds, but is being intentional that I, I will not respond to work messages after certain times. I just, I put it down. I don't look at it. I don't think about it again. You know, um, another thing I've done, this is another, um, pretty biggie on the boundary side. I've taken social media off my phone. Yeah. Well, these are all boundaries. These are all things yes. that yeah. it's about improving quality of life and I taking know. control. Uh, and th that's the thing. Sometimes as women, we feel some of my clients feel that, it, you know, they're at the mercy or even if we using the word victims to their schedule or victims to, you said the time audit, if they're looking at how their schedules are set up. It's like, well, I, I don't have time because I have to do so many other things. When we're really looking at it, we choose to opt in to that. Mm -hmm. And one of my mentors calls it mortgaged time. Mm -hmm. it, like, when we commit to our child playing sports, that's already mortgaged. Like it's, you know, it's like our money. If yep. we have a mortgage, we're committing to pay that mortgage for a set amount of time. Yep. Wow. That's such a great concept. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It's a great way to explain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, speaking about children and husbands, right? I think those people are the most impacted when we start creating boundaries. I mean, as I feel like it's way easier to create boundaries with people who we kind of consider external, like mm -hmm. with colleagues. It's easy to say, hey, I have a cutoff time and there's kind of that mutual respect. How do we have these critical conversations with people who are mostly impacted by a setting boundary, like the people in our home, the people who are really close to us? How do we start initiating those kinds of conversations to create yeah. those boundaries? So, um, can I can I go backwards one second? Yeah, of course. So, it's funny. A lot of um a lot of female entrepreneurs, if they have a small team, they get very close to their team. And so those conversations can be just as difficult. Um, if someone's not performing, someone's not doing their job, somebody's, you know, there's, there's a disconnect there. So I just wanted to, to say that it is something that, that female entrepreneurs can be in a lonely silo place. And as a substitute to that, they become overly attached to their team and treat them like their best friends, their family, the whole thing. That is, that's a whole nother podcast. But I just wanted to say is that that is a real feeling. And what I'm going to discuss doesn't apply just to family. It works in almost all situations. 100%. So, yeah. I love that you clarify that because I have been on teams where we've gotten so close and it said it does feel yeah. like a family. Yeah. yeah. And it can be really hard, you know, in that situation too, just, just as hard in a different way. Yeah. So um, one of the things that one of the best ways that I have to talk about boundaries in a way that doesn't make someone feel defensive or being attacked is, you know, start with me because I'm the one who's making the request, right? So one phrase or one way to start is, you know, Hey, do you have a minute? I want to talk to you about something that's really important to me. Oh yeah, sure. What is it? What can I, do you need some help with something? Well, yeah. You know, mom, I love it that you just pop over and, you know, you so much for me, but when it's during my work hours, it gets the dogs all going and, you know, it gets me off what I'm doing. And if I'm in a meeting, it's kind of disruptive, you know, to help me out. Do you mind, you know, checking with me before you just stop over? Yeah. Who can get mad about that? You've positioned it. They're doing you a favor. Look it. Some may say it's manipulative. I say it's very clever. <laughs> oh, and, and going back to social constructs between women, it's going back to that's how we would normally communicate with one oh, another. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's say you've got a team, your, your team, and they're working on a project and you are kind of freaking out because you're like, okay. I do not think this person is getting what I am saying. Like they, I'm putting it down and they are not picking it back up. 
So a great way to start that conversation is I am so excited to be working with you on this. And I know we both want this to be knock it out of the park successful. So I just want to make sure we're both on the same page about X, Y, and Z. Hmm. Yeah. I love that verbiage. This getting on the same page. It's not K, okay. you know, that, that eliminates the power struggle. Right. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're equals. We're, you know, yeah, doing that. That's another, that's another way. Um, one of the things, so, okay. This is an actual real life example. So my husband, one of the things that is his job, or, you know, is to empty the dishwasher every morning. And there are mornings that he doesn't. And it drove me bonkers until I used that, you know, the example of, okay, listen, this is why I need you to, I, I'm not harping on you now, but I don't think you understand why I always harp on you about the dishwasher. I do that because when you don't empty the dishwasher, it makes it something else that I have to get done, which then can potentially make me late or put me out of my routine. And it stresses me the F out. I need you to please empty the dishwasher every day. I know it seems silly, but it's something that will relieve stress in my life and make me happy. Right. What well, husband niece. doesn't want to do that and make their wife happy, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Again, you know, there are things that work well with your with your kids. Um, you know, especially teenagers. Mm. You know, um, and so you don't come at them as in a aggressive way. Um, but if your kid is doing something over and over and over and it's driving you nuts or it's destructive, you know, come at it from, and this, some of these aren't even in my, my giveaway, but it, you come at it from the perspective of, you know, kind of see that you're struggling with some things, yeah. you know, do you think, do you think there's maybe a better way to handle this? You know, do you, is there another tactic? Is there something else we should try? Cause I'm happy to, to help if that's the case, yeah. they're not cleaning your room instead of screaming at them you know, okay, you seem to be having trouble with this. What's going on there? Yeah. How, how probably deeper than like, they're probably dealing with something else. It's not that they mean to disrespect you. It's just, they have other things that seem more important to them at the time than cleaning their room. But they may have ADD and they can't remember, but two things at once. Had, yes. I have a child that has that. I have a <laughs> husband and two children. <laughs> So, you know, I had to be very specific and that's what this is, you know, very, very, very specific. Hey, can you pick up all your clothes off the floor? Mm. If they are dirty, put them in the laundry basket. If they are clean, hang them up on a note card. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> uh, you know, when they were little, literally. Mm -hmm. so, and I, all of this seems kind of silly. But it's, it goes to the heart of the problem, which is we don't communicate effectively. And right. really being able to talk about boundaries isn't about being rigid or telling someone they're screwing up or anything like that. It's really about, hey, I am not effectively communicating in a way that is getting across to you. So I need to be very, very clear with my intention of what I expect from this outcome of this conversation. I need to be very, very concise, use as few words as possible. And I need to be consistent. I cannot mm. ask you to do one thing and then turn around and make, you know, have you go in a different direction. Oh, I love that you brought up consistency. Because sometimes we feel like, you know, we build up to this conversation. Then we say it once and we're like, oh, okay, I let them know my position where my boundary is. And then <laughs> we're all human. It's new to the other person. So something, it does take that consistency to like reiterate, Hunt, this is the boundary. Remember, we talked about the dishwasher. Thank you, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, until it becomes a pattern or routine for them on their mm -hmm. part. We, you know, sometimes we take offense, you know, but what you said, it's just a lack of communication. Yes. So good. So good. Well, anyway, I mean, I know you could talk for days on this, but
but you have a resource for the people to grab. You're listening to this now. You're like, that's a lot to remember. Heather has got you. Tell the people how they can get your freebie and how they can really start having these conversations because, you know, it really starts with these conversations because we can create our own boundaries. We can have it all on, I want to say on our own, own time, our own court. But until we express these boundaries to the people who have violated, quote, our boundaries, then does the boundary really exist? Yeah. How do they know if you haven't told them? Yeah. So, yeah. If you go to um, my website, which is boundariesbusinessandboobs.com and click on the nine ways tab, you can download the nine conversation starters around having boundaries. So it's just nine different ways, solution situations in which to use them, where they work the best, where they would not be appropriate, you know, that type of thing. Um, so it really just gets you thinking and then, you know, be consistent. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. I can't wait for the women to get a hold of, of that. And to just really understand be clearer about the need for boundaries, right? We have to make, create clear boundaries, but we need to really get clear about why boundaries are important and how it really has a power to transform our lives. Because really the power to transform our lives is in our own hands. It's in our own yeah. mouths, right? And just these boundaries are our secret weapon to reclaiming our control, you know, even restoring balance and uh, it, you know, just creating a life on our own terms. I call it being the line leader in your life. Mm. When you were, because think about it, when you were mm. in kindergarten and first grade or preschool, you would come home from school and you're like, mom, I was a line leader today. I was a line leader. I was a line leader. And you're so excited because it's an honor and it's a privilege. Well, through the years and the time you stop being the line leader and you move back one, two, three. Or, and then all of a sudden you wake up one day and there are nine other people in front of your own line. Right. And yeah. there you are number 10. Yeah. So you got to work through the framework to get back and to be the line leader of your life. And boundaries is a modality to do that. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, this is such a good conversation. Thank you, Heather, for being here Thank today. Ladies, let me know in the comments or tag either one of us on social media, when you downloaded it and how you've implemented it and how it has changed your life. Because she said, we need to be the line leaders of our own life. This is the Burnt Out Entrepreneur Podcast. You're going to continue to keep burning yourself out if you keep giving away your time, energy, and attention to all these things that really, you're, you're leaking everywhere. And if you just created a boundary for yourself, let others know about, right? You can retain a lot more of that time energy for yourself. And how much more would your business grow if you were to focus that inward and just take care of yourself? Thank you again, Heather, for being here today. Thank you, Kylie. I appreciate it. Oh, we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.